Hello and welcome to Amy Knits. My name is Emily. I'm a knitter and making enthusiast based in Orlando, Florida. And this channel is my all to share all things handmade, especially knitting. And today we're talking finished objects. This is the Peep Show Pullover by More Thunder. And I did this mostly in September. And I'm here to give you all the details. This is the second type of hers I've ever made. The first was the Panglossian sweater. She also has the very popular Ladyfinger sweater. So there are some designs, some very popular tops and designs that she has created. I think it's super cute. It's really nice for a fun summer top. In my case, I'm just transitioning from tank tops in summer wear to more fall-like Floridian short sleeves. <laughs> so not appropriate for falls all across the country, but for autumn and fall here, it's perfect. This is also the first top I've ever knit for myself in 2022. And I know it's the 10th month of the year, but hey, you gotta do it sometime. So I'm excited to keep knitting for myself. So details of this top. I knit the size four. It's a 44 inch circumference chest. I have about a 40 inch chest and usually I do about a 40 inch top. This time I said, let's embrace a little positive ease. It's probably a little bit more than four inches of positive ease here, but my Top does generally line up with the measurements the pattern says for the size four, so that's perfect. I did not use the called for needle size. I had to go down half a needle size. I think I called for four millimeter needles and I used three and three and a half. Whatever one size down from the pattern is, be, is what I used. So I'm generally a very loose knitter. I have to do that all the time, not go, go down not only half a size, but sometimes a full needle size. It just depends, especially when it's all stuck in net. I get really relaxed and start knitting very loosely. But this is a perfect pattern if you need some kind of mindless knit. There is ages of stuck in net. It's a fingering weight top. The yarn I used, I used this yarn here. This is from Trailhead Yarns. I always want to call them traveling yarn. But this is Trailhead Yarns. It's hand dyed vegan yarn. It is 55% cotton, 45% linen. This base is called Fundy Tide. It's a lace weight and the colorway is the Silk Road. I purchased this, they're from Ottawa, Canada. I purchased this in Winter Haven, Florida at Four Pearls Yarn Shop last summer with my sister. I didn't know that this was gonna be the yarn for this pattern at the time. I just knew it was on clearance and it was really pretty and I really, really liked it. I put this pattern with this yarn. I've knit it, wanted it and also knit this pattern for years. It was in my queue. I purchased it when the designer had a sale and so it's been sitting in my Ravelry projects, want to make page for a while. And finally, when I purchased this yarn, I was trying to decide what to do with it. And I figured I think it would be a good, a, a good match. So this pattern does recommend using slub yarn. It's a fingering weight slub yarn. Slub yarn is now a very textured yarn. And this isn't necessarily slub, but it does have points where there are thick and thin parts to it. So it does have that element of texture. I held it double to achieve the fingering weight gauge, and I think it worked really well. It is a lot more smooth than I thought it would be. I thought it would have a little bit more of a textured slub effect, but I'm not mad at it. I like all the color variation in the top. I think it's really gorgeous. And for the contrast, I wanted a really dark purple. I couldn't really find what I was looking for. I don't know that I looked that hard though, honestly. Um, but I was in a nitpicks vibe at the time. And I had just used Knit Picks Lindy Chain for another project, and that's a linen cotton blend, so I thought that would fingering weight. I thought that'd be appropriate for this top. So I purchased it in plain white. And I have cellulose fiber dyes. They're called fiber reactive dyes to dye cotton and animal cotton and plant fibers. So I used the amethyst dye that I have. I just soaked about a quarter of the white Lindy Chain in it, and it came out with this really pretty purple. It's not as deep as I wanted, but I decided not to keep messing with it. This was good enough for me. So this is the contrast color. It's Lindy Chain that I dyed myself. I thought that was fun. To add my own personal element to it. I used about maybe 10 to 12 grams of this contrast color, and I used two and a quarter skeins of this. So as I said, I held two skeins together, and then I used about a quarter of the third skein. I caked it up so that I could pull from the inside and the outside simultaneously. And when I weighed this top, it's 224 grams total. I also purchased this yarn on clearance. I paid $58.80 for the main color here. 
So it comes to a little bit less than 20 bucks per skein, which I think is an amazing deal, especially for a hand dyed yarn. And I'll have to look it up how much Lindy Chain is. It's not very expensive. It's a very affordable Knit Picks has lots of pretty good quality, affordable yarns. I like them for that option. And also, uh, they all have an affiliate program, so if you have any designers or influencers that you really like, just support them through their link. It's no additional cost to us as buyers, but the designer, whoever's link we're purchasing through, gets a little kickback. So that's a really nice addition as well. It took me about a month to make this. I started at the beginning of September. I would have finished it all in September, but you know, there was a hurricane and we had to evacuate, we're all fine, it's all good, but it was unexpected and I wasn't in the headspace to knit for a few days or about a week actually, so I didn't knit last year in September. But if I did, I definitely absolutely would finish this. I would call this pattern adventurous beginner. The entire pattern is absolutely beginner aside from the crisscross. You just have to be willing to watch the video. It's a pretty easy to understand video. I did have to watch it many times though. It's very quick. I watched it at least 10 times as I was going until I got the routine of how the crisscrosses work. I did use a cable needle as she recommended. I tried doing cableless. It's not technically a cable, but I tried doing it without the extra needle and I just thought it looked funky. It might have straightened itself out with blocking, but I didn't want to risk that. So I just used the cable needle and all was fine. At the bottom, I said, eh, I don't care. I'm not going to use the cable needle. So the bottom X's or crisscrosses. I did not do that, but for the top, I did, since this is more of a feature, in my opinion. One final note about the pattern, it is very easy to read, it's very simple. It is very customized to whatever we want as knitters, which I think is good, especially for the length. The length said, knit to your desired length. Later in the pattern, she did give a suggestion in the measurements area, but I didn't look ahead. So I just kind of came up with however long I wanted to knit it, but just know that you can look later in the pattern for her recommendation in terms of length as well. Um, one final note, the very last page of the pattern does have, a no, um, does have a note to us knitters, basically thanking us for purchasing her pattern. She's here for help. And then the final paragraph is, let's have some religious anecdotes in it. And you can make your own call on that, but I just wanted to share, um, she does have some Christian values, religious notes at the end of the pattern. Now, I want to take you through the pattern from top to bottom, my knitting of the pattern from top to bottom, basically, and any modifications I made, what thoughts I have, what I'd do differently next time, if there is a next time, etc. So, to start off, I did gauge swatch, and I'm very glad I did. When you, I've never used this yarn, I didn't know how it would react to blocking and all of that, so I'm glad I gauged swatched. I think it did stretch a bit in blocking, I think I gained about another inch in length, and I didn't pin it out though, I just laid it flat to dry. So after that, I settled on going down in needle size, as I already talked about. Here it tells you to cast on with a long tail cast on method. I appreciate you told us that because when I was a very, very beginner, I was like, oh my God, what kind of cast on do I do? I didn't even know. Now that I know, I did the long tail because she'd suggested it. And Andrea Mowry I'd seen had said, if you do the long tail cast on tightly, which I always, always do, go up a few needle sizes. So I went up a few needle sizes, probably two or three needle sizes to cast this on. And I don't even think that was enough. I would have had to go up three more at least, but I'm not gonna do that. Next time I will do the German twisted cast on. I do the German twisted cast on method for all my hats. I already know it's effective. I already know it works for me, but this time I just said, I, it does take a little bit more yarn. So that's what I was nervous about. I thought I would run out of the purple. That's honestly the main reason I stuck with the long tail. Next time though, I know if I'm not doing tubular cast on, I'm going to be doing German twisted cast on for my necks. It is a little bit tough to get over my head, but it's fine. It's not going to break. It's not that tight. It's just something to know about for next time, basically. Okay, so continuing down, the crisscross is easy. She's got a tutorial for it. I just had to watch it several times. Um, for splitting under the arms, next time, it's very basic. Next time I will cast on a few stitches under the arms for a little bit of a looser armhole here, but it's fine, also fine. But it, and it also speaks to how beginner friendly the pattern is in that there's no underarm additions of stitches. There's no waist shaping. There's no shaping at all in the pattern. There's no short rows. So you just keep knitting. Very, very easy. You have the crisscrosses down at the bottom again. I saw a lot of people on Ravelry omit those. So it's certainly an option as well. 
and then you do your ribbing and your bind off and your contrast color again. So for the bind off, I knew I wanted to stick with a really stretchy bind off. And I still didn't think I wanted to do tubular, but I know Andrea Maori speaks a lot about Jenny's super stretchy bind off. I said, okay, let me try that out. I've never done it before. So that's what I did on the bottom of my sweater. I used her exact tutorial. I didn't bind off in pattern. I bound off all in knit stitch. And I think it looks really nice. The point of the contrast color is to stand out, not to blend in. So I think it's very effective for this technique. Then you come up to the arms. I just did the arms for the pattern and I did Jenny's super stretchy bind off for my armholes as well. And I think it's great. There's no feeling of it being too tight. Feels very loose, comfortable. I'm really pleased with the decision to do that type of bind off. That's everything I wanted to share with you about the top. Overall, I really like it. Would I need it again? Yes, but not in the immediate future. I don't think I need a second version. I think it's unique all on its own. It's perfect for casual summer days. I think it's really great for Florida, especially the fabric. I would absolutely 10 million times use this yarn again. I highly recommend the yarn. Overall, I'm really pleased with it. This is my first knit top of the year for myself. So I'm excited to cast something else on. <laughs> I'd love to hear in the comments below if you've knit this top or if you've used this yarn, if you have any more recommendations for summery type yarns, what you're currently working on. Let's have all the nitty chat in the comments. Please like and subscribe to my channel. It helps me grow and allows me to continue creating this content. And if you liked this video, I really think you'd like some of my other finished object videos, specifically the ranunculuses that I made. I made four of those and I have plenty of other summer tops as well on my channel that I think you would enjoy. Thank you again, friends. Happy making.